Hey everybody, I'm Ethan James with TheHonestCarpenter.com. I get a lot of questions from my clients about PVC trim versus wood trim. What are the pros and cons of each? So I wanted to make a video to clear up some of the mystery surrounding this topic. But I'm really going to focus on PVC trim because it seems to cause the most confusion for homeowners. I think the reason for this is because when you say PVC, people pretty much always envision this stuff. PVC pipe. What we use almost universally for plumbing drain lines. What they don't realize is that PVC has become a far more versatile product these days. It's getting massively distributed compared to where it was even just two years ago, and it's overtaking many other products where trim and casings are concerned. So I'm going to answer a lot of PVC questions here. But before we get going, I'll say real quick that if you want to see more helpful videos like this one, be sure to hit the subscribe button below and also hit that little bell beside it. That way you'll get notifications when I post something new. The Honest Carpenter channel is ramping up output these days and you're going to get a lot of interesting topics like this one. So please think about subscribing and turning on notifications. Alright, on to the tutorial. In general, the words trim and casings refer to the pieces of linear lumber that cover the borders, corners, and edges of our homes. And for many, many years, all of this trim was made of wood or wood byproducts. But the problem is wood trim really struggles in wet locations or places where it might get saturated. Because it's organic, it can rot. There are methods for making wood trim last longer in these situations. I discuss a couple in my trim rot repair video. But what the construction industry really wanted was a material that was truly impervious to rot and water penetration. What they got was cellular PVC. In essence, this product is chemically the same as plumbing pipe and vinyl siding. They're all made from polyvinyl chloride, a synthetic plastic polymer that you can turn into almost anything. But cellular PVC trim differs from other building products in that it's basically aerated to make it lighter and less dense. You can see this aeration when you look at the exposed edge. It has a foamy, porous look similar to end grain and wood. The number of trim products they're making from this stuff has greatly multiplied in recent years. It still can't compare to the staggering number of wood trim products you'll find, but it doesn't really have to since PVC trim is only necessary in a handful of scenarios. So what are those scenarios? Where can you find PVC trim and how much will it cost? And what's it like to work with? That's what I'm going to discuss here. So let's start with the where and how much. The good news is that you can get PVC trim virtually anywhere these days. All of the big box stores carry one or more brands. You'll often find it slightly separated from the other trim typically in the doors and windows section of the store. And the first thing you'll probably notice is that it's pretty expensive. Just how expensive is relative to product, but for something like a 1x10 board 8 feet long, you can easily expect to pay upward of $40. It can kind of make you cringe a little bit. But the thing is, it's not nearly as expensive as it used to be. I've personally seen PVC trim costs come down something like 25% in my region in just the last couple years. And that means it's barely more expensive than the dimensional lumber that we often use for trim, such as knotty pine and clear pine, both of which have actually seen price increases in recent years. I used to bid exterior jobs two ways, one with wood products and one with PVC products, and clients always sprang for the cheaper wood number just to save on costs. But as of the last year, with an ever-diminishing spread in costs, I don't even give my clients the option. I just bid exterior repairs with PVC. My clients hardly feel the price bump, and I can deliver a product that is truly meant to withstand the elements. With that said, where exactly should you use PVC on a house? The answer is anywhere that may come in contact with water, which means that virtually every trim component on the exterior of a home is a candidate for PVC insulation. In next week's video, I'm going to discuss the most rot-prone areas of your home in detail, so be sure to check back in for that. But for now, I'll say that I especially like to see PVC trim in a few places. Window sills, Brick molds around doors and windows, and fascia boards, and that's the board that's just up below your roof line. These are such water sensitive areas that going forward, I would personally never do a new installation there without using PVC. But it's not just exterior areas of a home where it can be used. Certain rooms inside your house are great places for PVC trim as well. Most important is bathrooms, especially the baseboards and shoe molds in the bathroom, or any trim close to or surrounding the tub and shower. Also, laundry rooms and mud rooms are another good area for PVC because they get mopped frequently. And because PVC trim is being made in greater varieties than ever before, you can find a number of molding profiles to use around these rooms. So those are just a few spots where I think you can most benefit from installing PVC trim. But as a product, what's it like to work with? Actually, it's very simple to work with. In many ways, it's almost no different from wood. 
For instance, it cuts a lot like wood. You can see here, cross-cutting with the circular saw is virtually the same as cutting a flat piece of lumber. The product holds a nice, clean edge. And miter cuts are no different. You can make extremely sharp, tight miters with PVC trim. Jigsaw? Totally smooth and accurate. If anything, PVC is easier to jigsaw because there's no grain to resist the blade. Watch. I can run off this OG detail like it's nothing. You can easily notch it to fit around utilities. PVC trim also sands a lot like wood. Here you can see me easing a cope or bullnose onto the end of this board. The material doesn't remove too quickly or too slowly. It's just the responsiveness you want for sanding. And as for nailing, also not that different. Here I'm going to hand drive in a 2 inch spiral shank galvanized nail, what you frequently use on exterior trim. The nail gets set in PVC just like it would in normal pine trim. Then it drives home much the same. You can even use a nail set to countersink the head which leaves a perfect soft divot for caulking or wood filler. So there's a world of similarities here, but what are the differences between PVC trim and wood trim? I'd say the most important ones are chemical in nature. I don't use the same caulks and adhesives for PVC trim that I would use for wood trim. I only use a handful of products that specifically state that they can be used with PVC. DAP is the leading national manufacturer for caulks and sealants, but I won't use their Alex Plus or Alex Fast Dry for PVC. I only use their Alex Flex because it's the only product that specifically mentions on the tube that it can be used with PVC trim. Same goes for adhesives. I've used liquid nails for a lot of things over the years, but on PVC projects, I turned to PL Premium Loctite because once again, it says on the tube that it can be used with PVC products. I frequently use PL Premium in conjunction with Brad Nails, which you can see me doing here in the shop, but it's exactly how I built these PVC wraps for some wrought iron columns out in the field. If you want a great example of a place where wood trim never should have been used, this is probably it. The original carpenters had wrapped these columns with clear pine, which they brought down into direct contact with a stone and masonry patio. And what happened? The wood wicked water up out of the damp surface and quickly rotted. It was guaranteed to rot from the start. PVC is the perfect replacement here because it can stand up to the ground moisture without a problem. And with a combination of PL adhesives, I could get all the components bonded to each other and sealed at the base. By the way, some of the pieces for this project were so wide that I had to buy whole sheets of 3 quarter inch thick PVC and then rip them down to the sizes I needed. This stuff is harder to find, and at $160 a sheet, it seems crazy expensive. But it's actually not any more expensive than buying, say, 4 12 inch wide boards of PVC at the same length. You just don't want to mess up a cut on one of these whole sheets because it would be a really pricey mistake. So, sealants and adhesives must be PVC formulated. But paint doesn't necessarily have to be. Azek, Royal Trim Boards, and other manufacturers state that you can use any acrylic latex paint on PVC. Here you see me using Valspar Paint Plus Primer to put on a couple coats. Most PVC trim paints exactly like wood. And now they're even adding some surface texture to the product these days to give it a little more tooth, or something for the paint to latch onto. Here you can see a totally normal finish and sheen at this angle. The one difference though, is that many of these companies say you should not use dark paint on PVC trim. It creates this heat index problem that causes the paint to fail, but really it's best to stick to lighter colors for your paint choice on PVC trim. This brings us to a couple other oddities about the product. Like wood, PVC is prone to expansion and contraction, but the thing is it doesn't expand and contract for the same reasons. Wood swells because of moisture content. It gets humid and bloats up, but PVC expands because of heat. So in winter the product will shrink, in summer, it'll expand because of rising temperatures. So it's best to sort of treat it like pine or other lumber. Install it with some gaps around your boards during winter. Or in the hotter months, you can run it a little tighter, so long as your boards are acclimated to the temperature outside. And speaking of which, here's one place I think it's really superior to wood. It doesn't warp because of environmental factors. If you leave a wet, treated pine board out in the sun for a little while, what do you get? A curly cue, just like this deck board I tore up to replace. But leave a few boards of PVC trim out in the blazing sun, and what happens to them? Nothing, except that they'll probably reach their max expansion point. They can take on a curve if you store them incorrectly, but they won't do it because of a drying out process, which is one less headache on a job site. So, I just listed a lot of benefits of PVC, but what are the drawbacks? One is that it can be marred or damaged pretty easily. As you see here, even some light contact with tools can ding it up. Sometimes it can be hard to find a board in the store that doesn't already have some surface defect. Another drawback is one that I already mentioned in the video. 
When you cut PVC, the exposed edges will look very porous, like end grain, only a little bit worse. And it's on every exposed cut edge. It can be hard to buff or sand out this appearance. Manufacturers recommend some ways to seal it in their warranty guidelines, but I've found that to some extent, you just sort of have to deal with it. That brings me to probably my biggest pet peeve, PVC sawdust. I've never seen anything like it. This stuff sticks to everything. If you rip a long board, you'll come out looking like you've been coated in coconut flakes. You really should use dust masks and vacuum dust collection every time you cut PVC. Even so, you can't get it all, and I often feel bad about littering yards with this stuff. It doesn't go anywhere and it's so visible. We've got more than enough problems with the proliferation of microplastics these days. It seems like this can only be making it worse. But again, the product is very difficult to dust manage on a job site, and that just seems to be the way things are for now. So those are the drawbacks of PVC. At the end of the day though, this is undoubtedly the best trim product ever created to stand up to water intrusion. PVC cannot rot, and that makes it invaluable in certain situations. Now that it's getting cheaper year by year, you'll see it replacing wood trim more and more. And that's it for the video, PVC trim versus wood trim. I hope the tutorial was helpful. Be sure to post questions or opinions down in the comments. I always try to respond. As always, thanks for watching and be sure to check back in for more videos. Thanks everybody.